Okay, guys. Hey, I'm back here with another book review here. Um, this one is going to be the... Uh, let me see if you can get it up there. Can you do it? The Wish Song of Shinara. This is the third and the final book in the original Shinara trilogy. Okay. And this kind of picks up after the last, you know, a generation's gone by. Like I said, Mr. Will Onsford got to get hitched to that wonderful little rover girl, Eritrea. One of my favorite characters. Okay, well, now they've had children. Okay, so we know that the inborn elfness of Will Umsford has somehow trickled down to the children again. You've got Brynn Umsford. She's the older sister. Uh, and, and then we have Juar Umsford. Okay, and their little buddy is Rune Leia, who is descendant of Minya's Leia. From the, uh, okay. you know, from the Sword of Shinaro, which is cool. But anyways, what happens here, because we know, Alanon's fiction to show up, things are about to get real once again, okay? Alright, they have inherited this power from their father to where they have something called the Wish Song. Now, for each child, it's a little different. Bryn uses it to create illusions, or, uh, you know, Bryn uses it to, to make uh, things grow and, and stuff like that. And, and sometimes, Jawar, he's the little problem guy. Obviously, the, the, the baby brother, you know, I'm a baby brother myself. Uh, he can use it to create illusions and do some different things. But for the most part, Will Lumsford, obviously, not liking the magic. You realize how the last book ended. He's like, listen, kids, stay away from it. You know, just stay away from magic. Stay away from it all, you know. Uh, well, anyways, here's what happens. Okay, every year... Will Amsford and his wife, Eritrea, go, go to this town to, you know, heal people and, you know, because Will Amsford's a healer, uh, you know, their needs and do some things. Well, so anyways, they're going to be gone for about a week or two. Okay, so you've got Bran and Jar left at the house, all to themselves, you know. Most kids be ready to be throwing a house party, but no. Once again, Alanon shows up. And here's where this gets, Ari. What's going to happen is apparently there's been some rumblings that there's these things called the Dark Walkers, a.k.a. Moored Wraiths. Okay, now this goes back to the first book of the trilogy when we're talking about this ancient book, the Edach, where all this... This sorcery and stuff has been collected over the years. Well, now we know the Warlock King, he's gone. Okay. There is no, sh there, there is no school bearers. Okay. So the, all the magic that the Warlock used once he was destroyed has since dissipated. Well, the problem is, is way back, way back in this time where Brona and his followers had first, the, uh, first discovered the Adash. Okay. He had, uh, you know, he's since perished, but they have lived on, apparently, long life and everything, under, you know, with nobody knowing that these guys are around. They're moored race. And uh, they have hidden this book in their fortress. Okay, surrounding this fortress is this huge forest that is a, it's a, it's a sentient being. Anybody that's tried to come through there, they get swallowed up by this forest. Okay? So, uh, that's one of the things that's going down here. Yeah. So, anyways, they've got to be able to get through this forest to get to where the Mordrafes are. Because the Mordrafes are coming, man, once again to take over the world. And they've got to get this Idatch. They've got to find the Idatch book. And they've got to finally, ultimately, destroy it. Okay, that's what Alanon's setting out to do. All right, so he he sends he, he's going to take Bryn, and they're going to go and set out and do this with Rune Leah. Well, Juar's kind of miffed because he has to stay home. Okay, in case his parents come back to kind of tell him what's going down. Well, that doesn't sit well with Juar, so he decides he's going to go up to Leah. 
where his parents are and tell them himself. And especially, a little party of gnomes travels in and that helps expedite his choice. And he gets lost in his own little journey to try to get to Leah and his involvement eventually comes back around but I like how this book did that. And he also, uh, he also along the way, they, they, they meet Kimber Lowe, which is one of my favorite, you know, favorite characters in the series. She's awesome. Um, and then they have, to, they have to go about doing that. Things go wrong. Horrible things go wrong. You know, certain fates are met in this book. Don't want to give a spoiler. You know, but, uh, you know, different things are going to... You don't have lots of... You know, you don't have too many main character deaths in this series. You know, but, you know, you, you'll have a few in this one. I will not ruin it for you. I want you to read and find out. But uh, this tale is pretty good. How Bren has to overcome that thing that she has in her. What is the Will Song? How can she use it? What what is it ha, has it shaped her because we all know that magic never you never can use magic without it changing you a little bit or do you change it this is a this is a big proponent in this book as it's going forward and uh, I, I think that you will enjoy it lots of interesting people you meet uh, along the way in this book but it's a good end to the original series and like I said the book that started it all you know that Brona hoarded with all his minions. You know this is the this is uh, the end of that series and that line. And uh, I think it was a fitting end. I liked how it ended. And uh, I'm gonna leave that up to you guys to decide what you think about it. Let me know about it. But uh, um, anyways, I recommend I recommend you go out and get this book. It's really good. The F stones are also in there too. They play an interesting part. And uh, but read and find out, guys, and uh, keep on reading from my book from my bookshelf to yours. Have a good one.